I'm certain that some people worldwide have grown up with Big Ideas Christian Direct to Video Series Veggie Tales, which debuted in 1993. It needs no introduction, but what I'm about to tell you is a very early version of the series, perhaps a prototype, though it's being made by a different company. Let's go back to 1977, 16 years before Veggie Tales was created. An early computer animated short film was being made, called Tales from the Countertop. It was animated by an early CG animation company called Mathematical Applications Group Incorporated, also known as Maggie Synthavision, which you already know worked on a few scenes from the 1982 Disney film Tron, and had a few demo reels and tests from 1972 to 1985. You might be familiar with the 1972 sampler demo, a wacky and catchy short film showcasing 3D animation like never before, featuring a purple ball with a phony face talking to the viewer. Well five years after the sampler demo, they made a short film that is oddly and closely similar to the Veggie Tales we all know, which was lost to time. Tales from the Countertop was a lot darker and sad than the original series, though it kept the wacky nature a bit. So let's get on with the post of how I found this short, somewhere around 2005. The film was contained in a VHS tape that I found at a local rental shop full of old goods in Detroit, Michigan. It was sealed inside a blank transparent case and the tape itself was labeled, Tales from the Countertop. The videotape is pretty cheap, roughly around 5 US dollars. After buying the tape, I took it home and inserted it into my VHS player hooked up to my boxy CRT television in my bedroom. I was greeted with a black screen for about a few seconds until a white text in the ITC Loodle in graph font appeared, saying, Tales from the Countertop, along with a copyright notice stating, Maggie Synthavision 1977. A wonky yet cheerful synthesized score blared as the title was displayed. After the text disappears, the video fades to the supposed countertop scene with what looks like Bob the Tomato and Larry the Cucumber standing there, smiling at the viewer. Everything in this animation looks completely different, a lot more primitive looking. The countertop scenery is composed of different flat colors, red for the wall, cyan and purple for the counter, light blue and light green for the first pot, and purple and orange for the second one. Bob and Larry look also different. Their designs look almost similar to the final designs from the original Veggie Tales, though looking more simplistic than ever, with Larry having a pill-shaped body and Bob looking like a sphere. Both of them have flat oval-shaped eyes plastered on their primitive looks. The quality and animation style are about the same as the 1972 sampler demo, though advanced lighting and ray tracing weren't entirely implemented at the time. Through stilted quality animation, they began to introduce themselves. Hi everyone, and welcome to Tales from the Countertop. I'm Barry the Tomato. And I'm Eddie the Pickle. Yeah, their names were entirely different. Barry and Eddie were the earliest names for Bob and Larry, and Eddie identified himself as a pickle, not a cucumber. I could tell that the two characters were voiced by one single person, possibly the same voice actor of the purple ball from the sampler demo, though I'm not too sure. And we're here to answer your questions, Barry said. Affirmative, Eddie replied. The two then hopped to the right where it showed an unfolded white paper composed of five polygons laying on the counter. Barry told the viewer that he and Eddie got a letter from a woman named Jessica Barlow from San Fernando, California. His voice however does not change to that of a woman's when he reads the letter out loud, though maintains that cheery tone. Dear Barry and Eddie, I'm a mother of two sons, and the youngest one Alex passed away unexpectedly due to overwhelming fear. Before he went to bed, he had watched a gruesome horror movie unfold on the TV screen, lights off in the living room at night. Morning came and when I went to my son's bedroom telling him that breakfast was ready, he was fully unconscious on his bed. After I took Alex to the hospital, the doctor said that he'd be in a coma for a while, until news broke out that he died instantly after attempting to fight the terror away from his brain. I could have prevented him from what Alex was watching on television, but his trauma had grown worse to the point that he was having deep horrific nightmares. I hope my son rests in peace after the ordeal, but I need some answers. Signed, Jessica Barlow. After reading the letter, Barry and Eddie were appalled at the story, addressing respects for the mother and her deceased son. 
by, the viewer, began to feel the same remorse as the two characters in the film. I believe this was meant to be a prototype version of Where's God when I'm scared from the original show, yet somehow it wasn't expectedly sad and messed up as I said at the beginning of this post. Barry looked directly at the camera and said, Well, Jessica, I bet one little film may answer your question. Right? Roll sound. Eddie ordered as the screen faded to black. It then faded to supposedly the tales from the CRISPR segment, though it didn't show the title card. Instead of showing a Frankenstein parody featuring the Frankencelery, it showed a scene that was taken straight from the 1960 black and white horror film Psycho. It was the infamous shower scene, but the murder had not happened yet. I have no idea why this was used in a short kids film, but I'm starting to get very suspicious about what the hell is going on with the writers' minds. During the film which is revealed to be displayed on the living room TV, the camera choppily pans to a character of what is supposed to be Junior Asparagus, standing there watching the movie. Judging by the primitive look similar to Bob and Larry, or Barry and Eddie in this short, his design is similar to that of a broccoli, and he was sporting a comically big propeller hat instead of his iconic yellow and red cap. As the shot stayed there, the iconic suspenseful jingle from the movie blared off-screen, followed by the blood-curdling screams of Marion as she gets stabbed a few times by a shadowy figure. The different junior character let out an almost horrified expression before the voice of his mother, supposedly Lisa Asparagus, called his name off-screen. The name of the broccoli child in question is Charlie, the earliest name for Junior. It's time for you to go to bed, dear. The mother said after the scene cuts to her peeking out from the doorway of the kitchen. Just like Junior, or Charlie, the mother is also a broccoli, yet she still sports her necklace, makeup and ear piercings from her original design. Just give me five more minutes, Mom! Charlie replied. That's what you said five minutes ago, Charlie. His mother spoke back. Let's skedaddle up those stairs to your room so your father can come over and tuck you in. Charlie agreed with his mother's order as she said. To be honest, dear, I think that movie is too scary and brutal for you. Judging by the mother's words, Charlie reassured her and himself that the movie wasn't too scary and brutal. Like with Barry and Eddie, Bob and Larry, their voices were a far cry from the original voice actors from the Final Veggie Tales series, despite the original show's cast were still young or weren't voice actors yet during that period. Charlie had the voice of an actual child and the mother was voiced by a different woman, both of whom remained their identities unchecked. As the short continues, Charlie goes to his bedroom and lies on his bed. That movie is only made up. It's not real. Or is it? Charlie Broccoli mumbled to himself as he drifted off to sleep. Then the scene shifts to Charlie in the dream world, showing him playing outside of his house. I think it was meant to represent the scenery from the Grapes of Wrath segment from the later episode God Wants Me to Forgive Them, but done in the different yet simplistic synthavision sampler style. Charlie was playing with a couple of butterflies until a loud rustling was heard, startling the little broccoli and causing him to become scared. He fearfully went inside the house, calling his parents that someone was coming to get him, but they never came. It was as if the parents had gone out, not to mention leaving their child home alone. As Charlie ran upstairs to his room, everything in the dream world started to fall apart. During this intense scene, a eerie and suspenseful synthetic chord played out of nowhere. The house explodes into chunks of polygons and shapes as the setting around Charlie envelops into a black void, causing him to fall into the darkness, and his horrified screams echo. He was then safely landed into a barrage of muted yet colorful and blurry blobs merging all together, equivalent to that of a psychedelic LSD trip. There was no ground however, so it made Charlie look like he was hovering over the trippy void full of random almost dull colors. Charlie is very freaked out, wanting to know what the hell is going on. That was until a loud voice boomed through my TV speakers as if the volume was at 100%, despite it being turned down to 15%. It was deep, distorted and very robotic sounding, though it sounded as if the speech was composed by a vintage speech synthesizer. The voice said the following. You are too weak to get away from me, Charlie. Though you are so dead little boy, thinking that you are brave and that it was all pretend, but you are wrong. So wrong. You are helpless, cowardly, hopeless, 
and especially a complete nobody. Turn around. As Charlie turns around to the camera to see something off screen with a more fearful expression, the screen snaps to black with a low droning note, followed by a time card in the same font saying, two days later. Then we are treated to a new scene. Junior was in his hospital bed with his eyes shut, connected to a beeping heart monitor and an oxygen mask. Everyone in the hospital room was there, Barry, Eddie, Charlie's mother and even Charlie's father, who is supposed to be Mike Asparagus but as a broccoli, sporting a black and yellow striped tie. The walls in the hospital room were white with the floor being a medium grey color. The last character walks through the doorway, a doctor wearing a white jacket and holding a clipboard. I believed he was meant to be Archibald Asparagus, but like Junior, or Charlie, and his parents, he's also a broccoli. Instead of the usual monocle from the original character, he was wearing black glasses with ridiculously oval-shaped lenses that fit the entirety of his eyes. The doctor begins to speak in his fancy English accent, though his voice sounds different as well. I think it was Rich Little, but I might be wrong. Charlie Broccoli is having trouble waking up from his deep-dreaded slumber that harbored a horrible nightmare, and the rest of the doctors are trying their best to help him. I'm so sorry that you have to hear about the news, everyone. Oh dear. Our poor son. Mrs. Broccoli sobbed. It's okay, honey. He'll one day escape from his nightmare like the brave boy he is. I hope so. Mr. Broccoli said, comforting his wife. Before Barry the tomato and Eddie the pickle could say anything, the beeps from the heart monitor were growing faster, and then they quickly stopped with one loud droning beep. The machine had flatlined. It appears that Charlie had suddenly and quickly died from the nightmare he was struggling to get out of, but it turns out he was rendered unsuccessful. Everyone in the room was startled in horror by the noise, and then Dr. Broccoli, feeling more remorse than the others, began to say the following. I awfully have to apologize again, but Charlie, oh Charlie, the nightmare destroyed him. There's nothing we can do to save him. He's dead. The other four characters started sobbing, with Charlie's parents in hysterics. A haunting piano melody lastly played during this disturbing scene, and then the film slowly fades to black. It finally shows one last piece of text in the same ITC Lugal in graph font, reading a quote from the Bible. Say to those with fearful hearts. Be strong, do not fear. Your God will come, he will come with vengeance. With divine retribution, he will come to save you. Isaiah 35 4. After that, the music concludes, and the text fades away, showing nothing but a black screen. I fast forwarded the tape so it would quickly rewind to the very beginning and eject itself, and then I took the tape out and put it back in its case. I have no idea what the fuck did I just watch. How would a company by the name of Maddy Synth Vision would animate something like this? How does this sick plot answer the question that the dead child's mother had written to the characters? How was this burnt onto a VHS tape despite the format's infancy in the 70s? I decided to email Big Idea about the footage and how I found it, telling them that I've watched a more disturbing and upsetting early version of Where's God When I'm Scared, the first episode of Veggie Tales. About a day later, I got a reply from the company, which read as follows. Dear Anonymous, I'm so sorry that you have to see something disturbing about our beloved Christian animated series. That video was not shown to the public eye. You see, back in 1989 during our company's foundation, which was called Graphics Studios at the time, I was given a VHS tape from a former staff of Maggie Synthavision, who said it contained their company's disconcerting CGI short film of what it was thought to be made for kids. It was the remaining footage that was put through a video cassette, and I kept it somewhere in the vault. In the year 1993 when we changed our company's name, we decided to make a less disturbing and more kind-hearted version of Tales from the Countertop and adapt it into a video series that everyone would love by the name of Veggie Tales. During the production of the series and Where's God When I'm Scared, we changed the names and designs of the characters, and while we were making the Tales from the CRISPR segment, we had to change the plot, have the horror movie be replaced by a vegetable parody of Frankenstein known as Frankencelery, and have a moral of the episode that God is bigger than any monster out there like the Boogeyman and Godzilla. 
And yeah, the series is based on a messed up and tragic computer animated short film from 1977 by Synthavision. Well in 1997 while we were in the production of Larry Boy and the Fib from Outer Space, the tape containing the disturbing prototype of our show mysteriously disappeared from the vault. I speculated it was due to a burglary or a twisted false memory that got me into making a series about sentient vegetables teaching you lessons from the Bible. Now as of recently, I'm glad you found the video, but I don't even know how it got there in that rental store to begin with. You should mail the tape back to our company so I can put it back in the vault. We don't want this thing stolen again or released to the public. But remember, God made you special and he loves you very much. Signed, Phil Fisher, one of the founders of Big Idea. After reading that message, I did what Phil Fisher told me to do, mail the tape back to Big Idea in a package. The VHS cassette is thankfully stored back in the company's vault so it will remain there, not to get stolen again or released entirely to the public. And yet, yeah, that short film was the origin of VeggieTales.